What's up you guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. So I'm outside today to film a video. Um, I'm sorry if there's any background noise or anything, but it's really nice out so I thought I'd come outside. By the way, I squint a lot in this video because I was sitting in front of a white fence and the sun was shining on it so it was super bright. So I'm sorry about that. For today's video, I'm going to be comparing the Dexcom G6 sensors to the Freestyle Libre sensors. So I started on the Freestyle Libre sensor about two days after I was diagnosed. Uh, my nurse gave it to me while I was in the hospital. And then I was on it for about six months until I switched to the G6 and I've been on it ever since. So it's been about three months now. I just wanna say that I'm not affiliated with either of these companies. Um, I'm not sponsored obviously, but that'd be great if I could be. <laughs> but I just wanted to make this video to help anyone who is trying to decide between the two sensors um, and just wants to know someone's personal experience um, and yeah what it was like. So none of this information is official I guess this is all from my opinion and my experience and how things have worked for me and chances are that if you try these sensors it may be different for you. Um, I know that there's probably people online who would disagree with some of the things I say in this video but again this is a video that's about my experience. My computer's down here because uh, I'm reading off these notes I wrote so if you see me looking down, that's why. So starting off with the Freestyle Libre sensor, uh, it's technically not a true CGM. Uh, I think it's called a flash glucose monitoring system. And that's because when you use it, you have to grab your phone and then tap it to the sensor and then you can get the readings from there. So that's nice if you don't really want to know your levels all the time and you want to be able to check it when you want to check it, which is similar to the finger poke where you only can see it when you see it. But the Freestyle Libre does still show you a graph um, of your blood sugar and the trends and stuff like that. So uh, it still has that aspect. It can also only hold information in the sensor for up to eight hours, so if you don't swipe it um, in the eight hour span, then it'll just delete the oldest information, and then you'll have gaps in your graph, which for me happened when I slept sometimes, but it's not a super big deal because it's usually like an hour or two. Personally, I didn't really like the fact that it's a flash glucose monitoring system because I like to know my blood sugar um, without tapping my phone to it, and I found it annoying. Um, which is kind of where the Dexcom comes in, where it is a true CGM, which means that it's actually continuously monitoring your glucose levels, and it'll send a Bluetooth signal to your sensor every five minutes to like update the levels. And that means you can hook it up um, to your pump or to your Apple Watch or whatever other device you have. Um, and with pump, you can do loop, which I'm not gonna get into just because I haven't done it, but you can search some things online if you want. And if you have an Apple Watch, then you can see your blood sugar levels on your Apple Watch all the time. So that kind of brings me into the alarm system aspect, which the Freestyle Libre doesn't have because like I mentioned before, it's not a true CGM, but with the Dexcom, since it does give you readings every five minutes, it also has an alarm system attached to it. So if you're high or low, your phone will set off a little alarm, which you can customize. You can also customize where you set your high and low ranges. So for now, I have my low at four and my high at nine, and I have different alarm systems for each, so I know which one's which, but most of the time I turn them off because they get pretty loud. And sometimes if I'm like, you know, like hovering around the 9, 10 area, which usually is fine for me. Uh, I don't want it to be beeping at me all the time because I am aware that I'm high. The alarms get progressively louder too. So if you ignore them, they get really loud, which is actually pretty good because at night if you're sleeping and you go low um, and you don't wake up, usually it gets pretty loud. But this is something that is pretty personal to me, I think. But I usually don't wake up when I hear the alarm because I would say I'm a pretty deep sleeper. Um, and yeah, I don't think I've ever woken up from the alarms. Maybe I have like once or twice at the beginning, but I think now I'm kind of used to it, so I feel like I'm gonna have to figure something out with that. But anyway, that's besides the point. So like I mentioned, you can turn off the alarms if you want to. You could set uh, your alarms to not have any high or low alarms, but there's a few things that you can turn off. Um, one of them is if your sensor fails, and the other one is if you have an urgent low. So I think that's about below two millimoles per liter or something like that. You can search up the exact stats if you want to. But yeah, those ones you can't turn off, which I think is a good thing because you probably want to know if you're that low or if your sensor stops working. Um, but yeah, everything else you can customize to however you want it to be. I would say for both sensors, the application is really easy. With the Freestyle Libre, you do have to kind of like move some things around. I did make a video about that if you guys want to watch it, which I believe is on the cards here. Or maybe it's on this side. I can never remember. <laughs> with the Libre sensor, I never had any issues with it hurting. Um, same with the Dexcom. Both of them for me were completely painless. I literally can't feel anything when I put them on. I haven't had any problems while applying the Dexcom sensors, but with the Libre sensor, one time the machine thing broke. Um, I don't really know what happened, but I called the company and they sent me a new one right away, so it wasn't really an issue. And when you apply the Dexcom sensor, it's also very easy. You literally just take off the adhesive, stick it on, and then press the button and it's on. It definitely can seem pretty scary to put it on at first because 
I feel like the sound makes it seem like it's gonna hurt, but it honestly doesn't at all, uh, at least for me. I know some people, um, it does hurt them a little bit, but it's definitely not a super intense pain, I don't think. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't worry about it if that's something you're concerned about. So once you put the sensor on, uh, the Libre and Dexcom kind of differ a little bit. The Libre will last for 14 days, and then you have to replace it, and the Dexcom sensor lasts for 10. And with the Dexcom, technically, you can restart it by taking out the transmitter, which is the part that goes into the sensor. But I've never done that before, and like you're technically not supposed to, but I've seen so many people on Instagram do it. Um, and I'm sure if you wanted to, you could, but I just prefer to do things the way they're like, you know, set out to be. Um, and since it's covered by my insurance, I don't really have to worry about using more sensors because it's all free, I guess. But Dexcom is very expensive, and I'll talk about that later, but if it's something that is a concern for you, then maybe you might want to look into trying to restart your sensors, although it's, yeah, like I said, technically not allowed, not that it's not meant to be that way. I also don't think it's as accurate once you restart it, so that also might be a problem, but yeah, I don't know, I've never done it. As for the adhesive, um, with the Libre, I've never had any problems with them falling off. They were always so sticky, and they definitely could have lasted way longer than 14 days if I wanted them to. Um, and they also never got caught on anything because the Libre is a very flat sensor. It's probably about the same thickness as like my camera lens, maybe a bit thinner actually. It's just like a nice little circle so it doesn't really get caught on anything. I mean maybe it got caught on like my bra strap once or twice but it didn't do anything to like pull it off because it's very flat. As for the Dexcom, I've actually had a lot of issues with the adhesive and it's something that is really annoying because for something so expensive I wish that it was, you know, better at sticking to my skin, I guess. But I know that there's a lot of people who've never had this problem, so I guess this is something that's a bit more specific to me, but with the Dexcom, I always have to put a little overlay patch on it, um, just like a kind of sticker that goes around it. Um, and I've tried to not do that before, but they basically fall off right away. I've had maybe two or three sensors that have fallen off um, with my Dexcom. Um, but I have called the company and they've sent me new ones right away. They've also sent me a lot of overlay patches, so that's also been nice, but it is kind of annoying that I still have to put them on in addition to putting on the sensor because I feel like it's just like a lot of stuff sticking to my body and it's kind of annoying that the adhesive on the Dexcom itself isn't good enough. And since the Dexcom is a thicker sensor, it has got caught on stuff for me. Um, one of the times it fell off was when I was at Winners and I was trying on this dress, and then uh, I had put on this other tape on top of it too because this one just really wasn't sticking, but the tape had started to peel off. And I guess this was more of the tape's fault than the Dexcom, but it literally just got caught in the tape and then it just ripped the whole sensor off. Um, yeah, and then I had to get that one replaced. So in terms of adhesive, um, yeah, the Libre is way better, at least for me. But I know that a lot of people have problems um, with either the Dexcom or the Libre um, and their skin being allergic to the adhesive. So that's maybe something else you might want to look into. Uh, but personally, I haven't had any problems with like allergies or anything. It's just problems with it sticking to my skin. <laughs> there are a lot of things you can buy though. Like there's different brands that have overlay patches and there's also uh, this thing called Skin Tac, uh, which is like a glue that you put on before you put on your sensor. But yeah, it's just annoying when you have to buy all this extra stuff because honestly, both sensors are pretty expensive and the fact that you have to spend more money in addition to buying the sensors themselves, it's just really annoying, but I guess it's just part of having diabetes is spending a lot of money because, you know, diabetes is really expensive. <laughs> Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about accuracy. So I know that the Dexcom is marketed to be more accurate than the Libre. Uh, I believe that their margin of error is smaller, which means it's more accurate. And I found that to be true for me as well. Um, I did wear both sensors for about a week when I was like transitioning from one to the other, and I found that the Dexcom was always more accurate than the Libre. It also um, figures out what your blood sugar level is closer to real time, if that makes sense. Uh, with the Libre, I found that the leg was about 15 to 20 minutes, um, but the Dexcom is more like 5 to 10 minutes. So it's nice to have that accuracy and actually have it be closer to the real thing, but when you're like running steady, I found that they were both approximately the same accuracy. Uh, with the Libre, I, I found that it was not as accurate towards the end. Like, usually the last two or three days, it was pretty inaccurate. Um, it was, like, close enough that I could still get by, but, yeah, usually the last two or three days, it just wasn't very good. Uh, and especially when I was, like, going up or going down, it would just give me some weird levels, and, yeah, it was a little bit annoying. Uh, with the Dexcom, I haven't found that very much. Like, Maybe on the first day it's a bit inaccurate, uh, same with the Libre, they're usually both kind of inaccurate on the first day, 
But the Dexcom stays pretty consistent the whole 10 days. This is another big difference between the Dexcom and the Libre, and that's calibration. The Dexcom allows you to calibrate, so you can poke your finger and then put your levels into the Dexcom, and then it'll like adjust its readings to match that. I believe with the G5 sensor, you had to do it, so I think once a day you had to poke your finger and then see the readings, but the G6, it's completely optional. And to be honest, I would recommend that you don't calibrate it because I've noticed that when I calibrate it like more than once, it just kind of messes it up. Um, and it, it's usually because I calibrate it when I'm kind of impatient. Um, but most of the time, if I wait five to 10 minutes, my Dexcom will like catch up to like what my actual blood sugar level is. And then if I were to calibrate it, it probably would just mess it up. So personally, I would recommend not calibrating it at all. But if you want to, you definitely can. Uh, sometimes I calibrate it once, like the first day I get it, and then that's good enough. And I try not to do more than that, because yeah, like I said, it just kind of makes things worse. Both sensors are also not super accurate when you're really low or really high, like usually below four and above like 12 for me. Uh, they both are kind of off, which I think is normal for sensors because once you get to those levels um, your blood sugar levels are just kind of weird uh, so they're both kind of equal in that area the last thing i want to talk about with accuracy is compression lows um, which is basically when you lean on your sensor and then it gives you false readings because it's like being pushed up against something i literally never had this problem with the libre but that might be because i only ever wore it on my arm because it's like easier to swipe um, but with the dexcom i have put it on my back and i've gone some compression lows with it so it's a little bit annoying because sometimes like in the middle of the night there would be like a section where I just like go down and it looks like I'm at two but I wasn't at two. But that might just be the placement. Uh, when I put it on my arms I've had that problem sometimes. Um, it also might be because the Dexcom is just a bigger sensor. When you push on it it's like going into your skin a bit more. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay and last but not least the price. I got these prices straight from the Libre and Dexcom websites. So I'm pretty sure they're right, but I mean, it might be different in different countries. But from what I saw, the Libre sensor costs $2,500 Canadian per year, and the Dexcom costs about $3,500 per year. So with Libre, each individual sensor, so one of these boxes, will cost you $97. And since there's 52 weeks in a year, you'll need 26 sensors, which will equal about $2,500. Dexcom works a bit differently because it's a subscription service, so you pay $299 per month, and you get three of these sensors, and you get one transmitter, which is the thing that goes inside of this part of the sensor. 299 times 12 is $3,500. So for some reason I thought Dexcom was a lot more expensive than Libre, but based on these calculations, it's only about $1,000. But if you don't have a phone, you will have to pay for a device that is basically kind of like a phone. It's called the receiver, um, and it basically just gets the readings and stuff instead of you having the app on your phone. I do have one from each company, but I literally never use it because, you know, why would I if I have this? But that is another thing that you will have to get if you don't have a phone. I don't know, I feel like I'm missing something with the prices, but my dad does kind of deal with all the financial stuff just because my diabetes stuff is covered under his insurance, so he kind of does that. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure if that is accurate information, but I got it directly from their website. But I was also under the impression that Dexcom was a lot more expensive than Libre, although $1,000 is quite a bit of money. Um, but if you compare it to how much other diabetes stuff costs, I feel like it's not that much more. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you're interested in getting it, I would just recommend calling either company, um, and asking them a bit more about their pricing. Um, I've had really good experiences with customer service with them, and um, they're really helpful, so yeah, I would just recommend calling them. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. I think both sensors are really good, and honestly, I would take either sensor over finger poking any day. <laughs> Obviously, with the Libre, there's the fact that it's not a true CGM, so you do have to swipe your phone to the sensor. But personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, I found it kind of annoying, but it's fine. And honestly, some people like it better. So if you like that, then it might be for you. But with the Dexcom, it does give you readings on its own. Um, and I prefer that. If you have insurance that covers both, personally, I would recommend going for the Dexcom because it's quite a bit more accurate. Um, and I feel like it's um, up to date more. Like, it gives you readings more accurate. Um, in real time. It also has the alarm system, which I really like. Another thing that I didn't mention before is that with the Dexcom, you can connect it to other people's phone numbers um, or phones or whatever, so they can see whether you go high or low. And I haven't set this up yet because I got the Dexcom when I came back home uh, for quarantine. And since I live with my family, I felt like it wasn't really necessary to have it because I live with four other people and I'm with them basically all the time. But when I do end up going back to school, um, I live by myself, so I'll probably end up setting it up because you know this could be the difference between life and death if you go low in the middle of the night and you don't wake up. But yeah, if you only have insurance that covers the Libre, it's honestly still a really good sensor. 
and although there's some flaws with the accuracy, I do think it's overall a pretty good product. So yeah, um, that's kind of my overview of the Dexcom versus Libre sensors. Um, I hope it helped you guys out a little bit and help you decide um, which one to go to. If you guys have any other questions, uh, leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.